Today will be our fastest run yet, meaning that we have to beat two hours and 21 minutes, and I think we can do it on Frozen Over. Now, when I say it's gonna be our fastest, that means that I'm going to pull out all the big guns for this. We're gonna be using Sada, we're gonna be using Druids, we're gonna use everything that we've cultivated this far from these last two pages of Black Borders and the ones on Intermediate and Advanced, and we're going to run the fastest run ever. So of course we need Sada, but we have a lot of monkey money still. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy the Viking Sada because I think that's her best skin. I'm probably a little biased because there's probably some Viking in my blood somewhere. So we're gonna use Viking skin Sada and we're gonna be on Frozen over. Now the reason I chose this map is because I believe it's the perfect spot to go as fast as possible. One being the fact that we can use attack right here and keep everything from even entering the screen. We can play Sada here to speed everything up. And worst case scenario, let's say Sada or attack misses, we can still have it come back around and hit here without it going out the entire track. So this will be the fastest. And if I keep saying it out loud, it will make it true. Today will be fast. So let's dive into this world record run. Let's hit FN9, hit play, hit Sada right here, and then speed this thing up. And then put a dart monkey here too to help out. And then I am gonna throw attack right here. And we're gonna get this thing so, 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 so fast. Now, obviously this whole series, all of these challenges have been, how fast can we beat them, right? But we're just going off the cuff. We don't come up with strategies, anything like that. But our times are relatively, they're fast sometimes, but other times it's semi-casual as far as like, I don't put a lot of prep into this. I just want to see what we can do right off the go. The funny part is none of that changed. I have not thought about this in any way, shape or form, but we are going to use everything that we've learned so far. And we're going to actually sweat this one out. We're going to be tryhards and... I think it's going to bring a whole new level to this. And I hope we can beat that time because every time that I think we're running like a perfect run, guess what? I lose by like 10 minutes somehow and we're in like fifth or sixth place, which isn't terrible, but I want to get first place, which means we have to beat it in less than two hours and 21 minutes. But I think we can do like two hours and 15 minutes. Or if I do the strategies that I want to do two hours and 10 minutes, let's just say two hours even. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use towers that I know are just perfect because we've been trying to change it up a lot, right? Like I don't want to use the same towers over and over. I find that boring. I find that repetitive and it just doesn't make for a fun viewing experience for you guys either. If we just keep using the same strategies, because honestly we could use attack, a Druid and a Sada and a village and get through like 90% of this game probably. And so today we're going to use all of these like broken overused towers and just see how fast we can do it because I kind of want to prove to myself that we're actually learning something. Now, if I just fail and we're in 10th, 11th place, then hey, you know what? I'm a casual player and that's just what I got to live with. I'm never going to be the best. I'll never be the LeBron of balloons and I'm okay with that. But I think we can do better today. And I always like to start these off with some kind of a brain buster question. So today is what is the most broken tower in this game? Now, I don't mean your favorite. I don't mean the best. I just mean broken, like for the price what tower do you think is broken? And I honestly think it's going to be a mixture of this middle path Druid because this third tier is cheap and it keeps everything at bay at the front of the screen. So in my eyes, it's kind of broken. And then I also want to say like the bottom path wizard, because once you get that like $28,000 or $25,000 upgrade, depending on what game mode you're on, that thing shreds through the nineties. Even it's a little broken, which I guess broken and best kind of go together. Right. But that's not necessarily true because I would say like a best tower would just be like easy, like the sub, because when you can use the sub, everything's super, super simple but broken, the sub isn't broken, I wouldn't say. It's just very, very viable like the ninja, but the druid is broken and the bottom path wizard's broken. Perma spike used to be broken, not anymore though. It's still pretty good, but it's not as broken. Now, the only problem with this run that I see is that it's gonna be boring for you guys because you're never gonna see any balloons. And if you came to watch me pop some balloons, it's not gonna happen because I'm gonna keep them all at the front of the track and hopefully we never, ever, 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 ever see them. And that would be the goal here. Now what I'm doing is just going for pure damage and I have my camo here, my main damage here, Sada is gonna be, I'm gonna have her ability on the ready. And so what we'll do is we'll instantly take down this Moab and then she's gonna clean up underneath with instantly. And that should be like a clean run on all of these. And then primary of course is just gonna be non-existent. But I also wanna do this to like prove to you guys too. I, I want you to think that I'm somewhat decent. 
I don't want you guys to be following these along as guides and not even know if I could even handle my own. So that's why we're going to go for this and just go as fast as we can. And that was actually really fast. I was actually pretty proud of that. And then we're going to go one, two, three. Okay. We got to get used to that though. So it's just one, two, I think. I think I counted more than I actually did it. Hit play, hit Sato. We're just going to go with this one here. I know the tack would be better placed in the front, but I think I can still fit it. Oh my goodness. That's broke. Now that's broken. This is going to be super simple, but I want to show you guys that I'm somewhat decent at this game because I don't, I don't feel that I am, to be honest, but I also play with some of the best players in the game, like Supreme Avocado. So like comparing myself to that is like, you know, I'm, I'm never going to be that good, but maybe I could be good enough to actually get some kind of record here. I don't know. Would this be a world record? That would be so cool. I don't think so though. I'm sure there's people that actually put actual time and effort into this. And I'm kind of just going by the seat of my pants and just seeing what we can do. So maybe not, not expecting the world here, but I'm excited for it nonetheless. Another downside to this run is the fact that there's just not that much to talk about. It's gonna be probably one of the shortest video lengths as well, because not only are we gonna film it in like two hours and 10 minutes, hopefully two hours, but there's just not that much to talk about because we have already just, this is it. This is gonna be it. Just destroying everything in your site. And I think Asada and Attack are the way to do that. And then having a recursive for backup. Um, the only thing I'm kind of questioning is gonna be Apocalypse, but we've learned, right? You start with Asada, you go straight to a Druid and that kind of covers everything. Now, one thing, my biggest, what would you call it? Uh, what's that word? I think it's crutch. Like my biggest hang up in this game is 1000% going to be impoppable because I over farm every time. Like I don't need to, but I always do. So I think what we'll do with this one is have a good base and we're going to, this will actually be a good test too, to see what is actually more efficient. And the, what I'm saying is like, I think it might still be better to just take your time instead of farming super, super early on. Now, if you're trying to get like an apex plasma master, you need to farm as early as possible to get that investment in. But my point is that what if we get a Sada, a good going tack, a bomb, and some kind of camo like a ninja with an alchemist, and then start farming like crazy? Because then that'll keep everything at bay, it'll keep the Moabs at bay, and then we could focus on like three or four farms. I think that might actually be a good play, and it might be something that we should do in the future as well. So we might actually change it up normally than we do a lot. By saying that I don't like to use these towers because they're overused and we're gonna try to change it up, we might actually be changing it up more than we normally do by just going kind of crazy, which is actually really cool. And that was way too fast. I didn't even actually know what I was doing right there. And deflation, we're just gonna go straight with the dart monkey because that works. And we're just gonna go like this all the way down and then hit play, okay. Now the reason why we're doing this is there's probably faster ways but I don't want to mess around and take that extra time to make those faster ways. So we'll get another tower that can attack ahead of the screen, put them on strong, get some extra pops in there. But I asked you guys what your favorite winter map was because I do want to do like a winter themed run where we use like ice towers and I guess glue could count because it slows them and in the cold you're slow or yeah, something like that. We'll come up with a themed idea, but mainly we're going to focus on that ice monkey and I think that'll be kind of fun. And I thought of only frozen over Alpine Run and I think uh, Quiet Street, but I totally forgot about that new map, the one where the each ice chunk leaves the screen. Ravage? Gorge. Engorged. I don't know what it's called off the top of my head. And then there's also Dark Path, the newest map. That one's wintry as well. And I totally forgot because I don't play new maps as often as I used to when new maps would come out. So we got to get to those as well. But I have felt free using this one because only like one person mentioned Frozen Over. A lot of people are saying Alpine Run. Do like an icy round on there. And I thought that'd be kind of cool because I personally, that would probably be like one of my least favorite beginner maps is Alpine Run. I just don't find it that appealing because there's no water. The track's really straight and long, so it doesn't have like the best spots to place things in my opinion, because like, let's say once you get to a point where you have most of the maps black bordered and you're just playing for fun, you do it on the odysseys, things like that. You don't want to just sit back and relax. You want to kind of get it through fast because you're trying to get the trophies on an odyssey. So Alpine runs always in odysseys and it's always really slow and it takes forever. If that's making any sense to you, just, I like the faster maps like this when I'm just trying to play for trophies or play for odysseys or a boss event, whatever it may be, especially on a boss event, right? Because you're going to get that nasty penalty timer up in that top right corner on something like Alpine run because you're going to focus more of your towers in the back to where they can clean up rather than be at the front where they're going to miss a lot. 
So Alpine Run, three thumbs down. So far, so good. I am seeing a little bit of Moab skin pop out of here, but nothing too crazy. But I did think of a potential downfall with this that I'm a little worried about is the collection event is going on. So eventually I'm gonna be hit with that and I really don't want to. There's a poopy brown border, that's pretty awesome. But I know it's gonna pop out and cause us problems and I really don't know what to do about it. I guess just take it for what it is because if you guys don't remember on skates, our top run by three minutes to in the loop, I messed up like royally. We were on Magic monkeys only, and I thought it'd be kind of smart to go for the Avatar of Wrath. Turns out, like, not only did I not have enough money, but it wasn't a good plan. And I want to say we lost, but I think what I did was I just restart the round or quickly hit home. But long story short, that still takes some time. And that map isn't as easy as this one as far as, like, look how close I can put this to the front of the track. I wasn't able to do that on skates. I had to back it off just a little bit. So even with the collection event popping up and being a nuisance... I see this being like insanely fast. I did mention in the last video though that it'd be really fun to get named monkeys and then you guys get to decide what I name each monkey every episode. But then I realized that it costs 50 trophies to get the named monkeys trophy store item. And guess how many trophies you get from completing an odyssey? 50 trophies if you beat it on hard mode. So my question would be to you, would you guys be down for me to film the Odyssey or should I do it in the offhand? Because I'm thinking I could do it and have it up for the next video. And it's an extreme Odyssey on top of that. And I thought it'd be fun to see how fast can you beat an extreme Odyssey? Because what keeps me from playing the Odysseys is the time. So if I'm trying my absolute hardest to go my absolute quickest, would that make it more fun and would it be bearable? But I still think it might take as long as a black border run to beat those five maps because sometimes, oh my goodness, Odysseys take forever and it kills me. But an extreme Odyssey even makes it a little bit more difficult because you got to think smart and hard about what towers to use. But if you guys are interested in that, let me know because I'd love to run something else besides a black border if you guys are into it. This strategy is pretty broken, not gonna lie. So what I think I'm gonna do here, I don't know if this is the best way to do it, but I just spent probably 5,500 or 6,000 on this and I need 14,500 to make this guy faster. And this sells for five. So what's that, 9,500 bucks? Yeah, 9,500 bucks I can sell this thing, but I don't know if it's made its money back. It probably would have been quicker for me just to, well, no, I think I still make money because as long as I make like 1,200 bucks, I think that takes care of the sell price. But why not just leave it at this point? We're still going fast and nobody can see anything. So then we can just use Sada's ability to make it go even faster. My concern with using farms is that when I sacrifice the time to get farms and to save up for things, then obviously we're going to have a problem with balloons making it past the screen. But that hasn't happened yet. We're still going like ultra instinct fast right now. Then I mentioned a sub. We might as well just use these two because they're insanely fast. But what's really cool about this is that it takes so long or they keep them behind the screen so much that the sub takes forever to even get his bullets or his missiles to them, which is pretty cool. But I'm gonna sell this one now, and then I think what we'll do is just, I mean, we're good, honestly. Maybe just anything at this point, just get one of these. Just put it right there so we can just keep attacking. Since we keep getting money, maybe I'll buff it a little bit. I mean, does it matter? <laughs> like, we're keeping this stuff behind the screen. This is awesome. And that's game, there we go. I don't think, yeah, there's no way. This is 100% like our fastest run ever. I don't see how it couldn't be. Even military only is gonna be super easy because we're gonna start with Sada, place her in the corner. Now that could be faster. That I'm a little nervous about. I just thought of that, like how long Long I'm taking to get this done could be like detrimental. But now a sub would be a good play, but it's gonna keep things too close. So I think I'll put that sniper in the same exact spot and then maybe a sub. I just don't really wanna deal with the sub right now. But do you see how they're all coming out a little bit too far? That's a little scary. The sub just takes too long to get his missiles all the way down to the bottom of the screen, which is why I don't want to do that. And the sniper can shoot through the screen. Like it shoots past the entryway for some reason, which is awesome. What I am going to do here, because I think we're doing pretty good with time. I'm going to let this guy get out of here first. And I know it's a little bit of a weird way to do this, but I think we're holding off the balloons well enough. And if we get lucky and they place the caveman like right here in this spot, that's going to actually be very helpful and for free. How many hits does it take though? This is taking like 37. Okay, not a bad spot. That's not great either, but now we can put this guy here and just go for that middle path heavy shells. And I got some comments on this, by the way, about um, that I secretly love the mortar. And guys, I, I, I don't hate it as much. I've been using him a lot. Maybe I do hate him, but you have to like love your enemy to hate your enemy kind of thing. I think I read somewhere. Mentioned that before, but I couldn't remember where I heard it from. But I think we're 
kind of like in the mortar now. It's just, it's not the worst. It does good for cleanup, but if you saw the last run, I used it on chimps mode and I went with pop and awe and I actually got it. And I've never gotten pop and awe in a chimps run before. So it was cool. It was like a test. Plus we still managed to beat it our first try, which was awesome. So no setbacks there, but pop and awe was very, 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 very lackluster and kind of let me down. I don't think I'll ever go for Pop and Awe again unless I just have extra money to spend because it was such a joke. I thought getting Pop and Awe would actually make the Moabs and BFBs like wish they never came onto the screen and it's the exact opposite. They made it farther onto the screen. I wasted like 40 grand and I know there's going to be some people saying like, oh no, but it's actually really good if you like stand on your head and do a spin three times and use Striker Jones and Alchemist him with a million dollars plus Ultra Boost. And no, we're not about that here. It's just not a good tower, but for this, it'll work. It is keep Keeping everything at bay and that's all we really need our camo's pretty good our lead's pretty good only thing i'm concerned about right now would be a moab and we don't really have good clean actually it might not be good to go for this art lily battery right now huh we need something to take down that moab instantly and we don't have it yet and our only all camo seer is the sub like the revealer but that's all the way back here so we actually have to think about that our camo is pretty weak so let's do this let's take out a sub for the first guy because all we have to do is break down the moab and then we'll use soda to clean it up so it might be a little bit slower but it's not going to be like instantly slow and then we can use the pop and ability or the artillery battery ability which is really cool and soda's ability look how much the sub isn't really attacking though because there's nothing to hit the sniper and the mortar kind of handling that's pretty cool Okay, so I just gotta get ready for this. And as soon as it goes 40, I'm gonna hit my second ability. I just, the timing is hard because usually you can stop the round and do that kind of stuff, but here you cannot. So there it is, here's that one. And then, oh my goodness, I am okay with that. That was actually really awesome. And then I totally forgot I had this guy and he's just gonna wreck everything, the $11,000 plasma accelerator and we might even sell the sub for it because the sub's not doing much but this guy's going to constantly get attacks of course because he's shooting off the screen so this guy sells for five thousand and we need eleven thousand for him so let's wait for six thousand and then just sell the sub because i don't really think we're going to need it anymore and hopefully we can get it before 50 here and then we can make this thing go really fast oh there it is perfect sell this one buy that one and now we are just in the clear and then if we got a sniper to go with it, I was worried about camo leads and stuff, but this guy's right there. So we're fine. And this is just, <laughs> this is monstrous. Hopefully, okay, the Moabs are making it a little bit out, but nothing too crazy. And I'm going to be honest with you all. It's all possible because of Sada. This would not be the same game without her. And oh man, I have even money to spend. I don't even know what to do with it, but I don't care. We're just going to use the ability and just get out of here. That was insane. That was so fast. That was so fast. Oh my goodness. And now we're on Apocalypse. Who cares though? It's Sada. We got our girl here. Just go play, 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 play. Hurry up. Get Sada. Get Sada. Okay, there we go. Our girl got it. And then we got this guy here for a cleanup and then we can go fast. Why didn't I go fast earlier? That was really dumb on my part. And then we're going to go straight for a druid, but not in the lockup spot right here. I want him right there there because I am going to put something like a sniper or even a dart. Oh my gosh, that was scary. Do you think I wasted a lot of time by not going faster off the go? Should I like immediately hit the fast forward button and just take my losses? That's more of a risk though, right? Like we've learned that it's better to play it safe and clean than to completely just like risk it for the biscuit. So it's getting a little overwhelming for us already. I don't know why though. Well, I mean, it's because we're on round 19 with like no towers here, but we just need a couple more bucks. And luckily her ability is so fast to respond to, which is why I wanted to get that monkey knowledge. I don't even know if we got it last time, but that monkey knowledge that allows you to get your abilities faster after a certain level would be so helpful because we use her ability a lot. Like she is a reason that we can take down Moab so fast. And she's a reason that we can clean up 76 or 78 if we're having a little bit of struggle bus going on because her second ability is just a demolisher of worlds. Sada's OP and everyone was giving me smack in my comments saying that I was talking too much trash on Sada or on Adora but why wouldn't you talk smack on Adora I don't mean to be so you know pitiful about it but at the same time like Sada is cheap you can get her on the first round of every game mode except for impoppable well even then I think you can get her right and half cash maybe. But then on top of that, she can handle herself. She can pop every type of balloon because her ability allows her to pop leads. She can pop camo off the go. She is unstoppable. And it's just crazy to me that like people would think that Adora is better. I don't think anyone said Adora is better. They just said that they really liked Adora, but I just, I guess I'm a hater, but I just couldn't figure out why. Like I used her that entire last run and she caused us to lose a good few places. Now you could just say it's my skill of playing with Adora, 
but I don't think that's the case. It was just kind of like, she just couldn't pop the purples. So I had to remember to use the purples and then she couldn't pop the camo. So I had to buy a ninja and it just, ugh, blah, 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 blah. not my, not my cup of tea guys. But so this is what I was talking about. I don't want to like over farm right now when we can buy other things. So I think what we'll do here is we will get the sniper as well. And we'll get this one. So that it will keep everything up at the front. Oh, we have a Moab coming, don't we? Oops, totally forgot about that. So I'm actually gonna grab another sniper here. No, 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 let's just do this instead. What are we doing? We don't need that sniper. Forget that sniper. We got lead popping, we got it all. Here we go. Sada, Sada, you got this? Dude, are you kidding me? Okay, she just saved that thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're gonna do this just in case another one pops up. That wasn't like a too slow of a run, so we're okay, but I do need more money here. And the Druid will get everything else that we lose on right here. So that's okay. And this guy too, I think. No, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Okay, okay, let's not do this and say we did. Okay, another Druid. Another Druid, another Druid, another Druid. What are we doing here, guys? What are we doing here? I'm panicking like crazy, but I need to pop these. Okay, Sada just completely came through. I don't even know what just happened, but it worked. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I probably won't have any sound, but I'll show you what just happened. It still gave our, gave our time okay. Like that was super crazy to me. We're gonna put her here, I guess. That was so weird what just happened. So I was panicking, losing everything, and I wasn't paying attention to the rounds, and I wasn't sure what was going on. Come to find out, I just used Sada's ability, which I just happened to get. I got lucky and it cleared it all out and cleared out that round 60 that we were having struggles with. So I don't think we lost much time and it's better than losing. But honestly, what went through my mind and I honestly started panicking was that like, if we lose this far in, there's no chance of getting a first place run. And it was kind of like so demoralizing in my head right there that it was like, do I even want to bother at this point? Like we've already established that we can't do it. So why bother? But I think we're on the up and up like time 17 because I want to say we were at like 48 minutes was our top time to get to hard mode and we're only at 36 minutes and we're going to be done with this one like easy gravy. So I don't see how this won't be like insanely fast. I just got to mentally prepare myself for half cash and apocalypse. No, we just did apocalypse. Half cash and what was the other one? Impopable. And double HP sometimes gets me or alternate balloons rounds because I don't pay attention. But I have Sada again, so we should be okay because she can pop all the way up to round 24 on her own with that camo lead. You can use her ability and it's done for. I love Sada. Oh my goodness. I am a Sada fanboy and I think she's the best hero. Like there's, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Sada could ask me for money and I'd give it to her. I, I just love her. That's how it is. But now with this druid, we should be able to just go like super fast. And that's the whole point here. Yes. But could you imagine doing these strategies for every single map? Like how boring would that be? Oh my goodness. But it's fun to do it every now and then to show the game who's boss, right? Like don't mess with me. I'm the man here. And then so <laughs> I guess that's what I'm looking at. I'm going to go with this wall of fire right off the go because it won't be the best, but it'll be pretty awesome. This part of the track is what worries me about other tracks. Like when I was talking about Alpine Run, Alpine Run is like this, but double for that beginning. And yeah, you can combat it with what we're doing here. But if we didn't have this bend up front, Sada might not be the safest choice in the beginning. And then after that, you're just stuck with placing a bunch of towers up front like we're doing here and hoping that you can get them all out quickly. But obviously it's gonna be a lot faster here because if they're only going from this spot to up to here and then turning, you have all this extra time to hit them in this bend. Plus it's still not as long as this one. And this is all just straight. So if you miss your go, you're done. And that's just, that's, that's just not good guys. That's, that's all there is to it. And that's why I'm not the biggest fan of those other maps, but I'm gonna get some cram, some, I'm gonna get some camo here. I'm gonna grab some camo. And then I think uh, I just wanted to be safe there. I just didn't want to lose to any camos. And I think a bomb would be pretty solid right now. Just like right here. Yeah. Cleanup bomb. And then remember we do have our first ability, which I am going to use on this Moab. As soon as it pops out, I think eventually it'll pop. I don't even know what's going on. Okay, Sada, okay. Dude, Sada, why'd that take so long? You are the best. I thought she couldn't pop them fully. I thought she could only clean up the underneath. I didn't know she could just disintegrate them in one go. I mean, I'm not complaining, but my goodness. I don't know why, but this really makes my day when I see this right here. Yes, it's cluttery. Yes, there's a bunch going on, but just to completely destroy the screen with balloons or with towers to destroy the balloons is such a cool thing to see. Like these mobs barely make it out. I'm sure we can make it even faster. If I was like a professional professional, I put time into learning this. I guess that would be the best way to get a world record, right? Like we play the same map over and over and over and we maximize our strategy and we put splits on it and we make sure that like every little thing's timed perfectly so I can use Sada's ability right when we see that Moab and it's like boom, 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 use that ability. Can't even use the ability because there's nothing on the screen because that's how good these towers are. But my point being is we're not that sweaty. 
So I, I guess we're gonna take what we can get, which is this right here, just completely not letting anything in the screen. This is awesome. I don't even know what's left to do. I mean, there's not much you can do. We're just kind of waiting for it to end now that we're doing so <laughs> I love this. And even with all this effort though, and going as fast as monkily possible, it looks like we're saving about five minutes. That's what it looks like, about five minutes from our fastest time, which is amazing. I don't mind that, but I'm just saying that it could be quicker. Do not give me any trophies, please don't. Okay, silver border done, hard mode, here we come. Again, same exact gameplay here. We're gonna put Sada right there and then go for it. And we put our free dart monkey down right there just as a safety. Probably should put it back more for an extra safety. Oh, I didn't think about that. For in the future, that is what we're gonna do 100%. And we're gonna put attack down to keep everything at the front of the screen. This is gonna be pretty much what we're doing unless something happens and we need to like change it up. So I might go back and forth between like a druid and a tack or maybe even a sniper because I think those are all just great towers for this. But this one does a really, really good job of just making everything stay outside of the screen. Here it is. Every single thing is covered right now before I actually start farming for once. I have never done this before and it actually feels kind of good. I have my camos covered. I have my balloons covered with Sada. I have my leads covered with both of these and I have just general balloon popping and cleanup with this guy. Now, of course, we have nothing for the Moab that's coming out, but we can quickly just buy one of these closer to round 40. And I think we can start around like 37, but I might only be able to get one farm. And this is what I don't like about farming so late is yes, everything's covered and no balloons are even getting on the screen. So it saves me the time. But at the same time, it's kind of ugly. It's kind of gross that we only have one farm by 40. So that's exactly why I'm going to greed. I don't care, but 36 might be a little rough, but probably not. Nope, not even. Oh my goodness. They're so good. Our team's so good. There's nothing that can stop us. And I'm going to grab this overdrive to clean up on that Moab. And what's cool about this ninja is that going just for a 202 is actually really good because his caltrops are able to build up a lot of them because the tack and Sada and the sniper and the druid are keeping everything outside of the screen. So we can pop camos if anything gets by. It's actually really, really, really cool. Now I just used Sada's ability on accident because I went to click on the... Dude, are you kidding me? Ugh. I accidentally went to click on the ninja and I clicked Sada's ability, which kind of, you know, threw us off a little bit there. So I'm actually going to sell this guy once I can get a little bit more farming here done. We do not need that happening again. No mistakes allowed, guys. So I think I can get the tack in this range, hopefully. Uh, yes, perfect. Okay, so we can grab this one and then the camo and then we can sell our ninja buddy here because he's in my way. And then what we'll do is we'll buy a bomb and then one more farm before we start saving up for the long haul here for like something like the tax zone on round what 63 but for now i think what i'll do is i'll just grab one of these and that'll buff this guy up but i don't want to ever hit him again and accidentally hit her ability and is stronger stimulant actually worth it i always just go for the third tier but the fourth tier might be better because then it'll just hold it on there longer and we can attack better hopefully that's the plan anyway that was so easy by 58 we have it now can i fit an ice monkey right here will it work though like will embrittlement work that far away i doubt it right i mean it's worth the shot why not just go all the way up there and then down like that. I mean, it's working, working good enough. I like it. By 73 or 72, we are going to have the Prince of Darkness and a fifth tier attack, two of the most busted towers in this game. Oh my goodness. This is how you play balloons and I do not see how we could do any bad here. Like this should be a golden run. Well, if I could put a plane here, it's be even better. I don't think I need the bomb anymore. So we'll just put a plane here instead. Because he attacks outside as well, I think. No, look, he can't even get off attacks. They're not never missing. That's insane. But each of these sell for $5,000. Why do they cost so much? I think it's because I don't have the monkey knowledge yet, right? Because if this was on my main account, it'd only be like $4,900 they would sell for. But either way, we got $15,000 here and this is $25,000. So I'm done. Let's just call it a day. That's it. Put a little bit more damage on this guy, maybe. Even he can't attack. This is insane. This guy is literally not letting anybody pass. Dude, that's our chimp strategy is attacking this guy. Oh my goodness. I keep clicking that second ability so often. It's kind of driving me nuts. And I know I could get rid of it, but well, why don't I get rid of it? Why is it even there? I can use the ability. I just don't want to forget like what I'm using if I accidentally get like a druid or something and it has the ability and it takes the spot of sodas, but whatever, that was fast as can be. Please don't give me this. Oh, no, 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 no. See, that waste is about 10 seconds because I'm just talking and that feels like it's wasting 10 seconds talking about it. Okay, what? Oh, dude, don't freak out. Don't freak out. You got this, buddy. I'm freaking out here, guys. I don't like that stuff. It drives me crazy. Sada, go right here. Do your job. Okay. 
Now, if she can hang on until we can get a druid, we are golden. Well, she has our ability? Oh my goodness. I'm just worried about her on chimps. I'm hoping that that spot will work, because if it doesn't, I'm scared. But for this, I foresee like a similar pattern. We're just gonna get to the third tier druid with the top path, and then we're going to go for that wizard. The problem with the wizard though, is that shimmer is such a wasted thing. Like we don't need shimmer really that early on anyway. And so you're just wasting like, what is it? A few thousand, like 1500 bucks or something for it. Do any of you ever just buy the druid of the jungle and don't get hard thorns or you'll say you'll get it later? I always automatically just buy it cause I know I'll forget and then I'll lose to lead and be like, what happened? And it's all because I didn't buy hard thorns because at one point you could just get Drew to the jungle and it would take down the leads on its own. And that was amazing. And then you had to start getting like the different ones to make it do things, which is just kind of crazy. But if you believe it or not, if you guys just started this game in like the last few months, the Druid's middle path didn't do that. It didn't always have that little thingy there. And the Druid middle path was never used. Like the Spear of the Forest is my favorite tower. And it was just such garbage. Like you just would never go for that path or anything. And they've been doing such a good job at making him better. Like for instance, you get lives now, I think with the fourth tier, right? Which is really cool. And the Druid of the jungle is an amazing, amazing thing. Was it always there or was it a new upgrade path? Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. I was gonna say the upgrade's always been there. What it didn't do was it didn't leave the brambles on the screen like you see, which is a huge, huge, huge upgrade. That wasn't always like that. But here's what I meant though. I have to waste $1,600 for the shimmer. Like whoop de doo Now this guy can see camo, but so could these two, which was fine. It's just such a waste early on. But if we can just get 30,000 or 3,025, I don't think we can take down the Moab with this in any regards, but it'll clean up the Moab. So maybe we can just grab like a super monkey last second and then that'll help pop it. And then we'll move this guy's ability back here to where the little drones come out of there and we should be okay. Cause by default, it just throws it out like the farthest point and that's just not good. But if we leave it here, it's gonna constantly wreck everything, which is so cool. How about like here instead, right there, right there. That's a good spot. So what I'm thinking on 39 is we'll move this back just a little bit. And the reason why is because now it'll give more time for us to actually destroy the Moab and then we can use this to clean it up, I would hope. Okay, that, that wasn't too bad. Could have been a little faster, but now we can move him back here. And honestly, I think I might just go straight for that 28,000. Because once we get Prince of Darkness, we're golden. Never mind, scratch that. We're like barely halfway and I don't want to take that much time on the Moabs. So I think it's better to have this guy with a little bit better range and then we'll save up for 28. Just cause we need the mobs to pop like right about here and I'm hoping they do. Let's see, uh, I mean, it could be worse. It wasn't the worst, it's not that bad. We could sacrifice a few rounds here cause I don't know what else we would buy. We could get Sun Avatar actually, that could be pretty cool. And we do have the monkey knowledge now to where he pops purple so there would be nothing that can get past us. But I just think that this is the best because it trails out the screen and it goes as fast as possible. Like this one, we have to wait for things to come out to attack them. This one doesn't, it just leaves them gone. And remember what makes this tower tick is that he pops balloons inside of his bubble, which his bubble is massive. So if you have him somewhere like this, it's going to be constantly uptime. The only thing I'll keep it from it is if we're not popping enough balloons and there's not enough balloons to even pop because we're got, <laughs> we got this guy too early. Not that there's too early to have a dominating tower like this, but you see my dilemma. But now we're back at the 3000s again. Uh, where's the Z? Oh, I didn't even see the BFB, did you? That was wicked. That is this guy's downfall though, is the bigger class balloons. Like I know on 80, he's gonna struggle a lot, but guaranteed we'll have a sun avatar, if not that, plus like a robo monkey, plus like jungle's bounty. We're gonna be chilling. But I am curious to see how far 63 will make it, and it looks like it's nowhere. Yeah, there's not even one. These big old dead ZOMG BFB things that I have aren't even letting them go through. Now I wish I could choose though, like that's what's kind of a bummer about this tower is that you just get whatever it gets based on your, it's just all random. It's like the alchemist. I wish I could choose like, let's say like 90% BFBs. So yes, my graveyard will get depleted quicker, but I don't want to waste any balloons on these little guys. I don't care about those. Like I just want like the choice to pick one big ZOMG that just kind of rolls out from back here and just integrates everything in its path. Or let's say like a big old flock of Moabs and that's all you get. So no BFBs. I don't know if it equates to the same amount of damage or however it works, but 
It's just I have noticed on rounds like 95 where you rely on this guy to pop all the DDTs and you won't get a BFB zombie for a while and then the DDTs will pile up and you'll lose on chimps. That's happened to me multiple, multiple times. It's very, very upsetting, but you have no choice on what comes out. Even though his graveyard's full the whole time, it's just like, nah, 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 nah. Maybe it's just the way I use him, but at the same time, like, again, there's just so many things that aren't in the descriptions of these towers that you just don't know about. Like, reanimate even more powerful bloon servants to obliterate the enemy and enhances all other necromancers. What? It enhances all their necromancers? Is that good? Like, would that be a strategy to get one Prince of Darkness and then a million, but you wouldn't have enough graves in the pop yard? Or pops in the graveyard? This is the way, though, and I do not see, like, the ZOMG is getting demolished as well. I do not see how we're not going to get, like, a beyond first place time. Like, it, it, first place time, it's unachievable by any other standards or any other maps just because we are destroying these things right now. And Sada, don't let us down. We are on double HP and we know how this struggles. So, out of all my years of playing this, I never noticed that this map had snow falling on it. Uh, I saw, all of a sudden, saw him falling, like, through this area here, but it's weird because it's white, so it blends in with the white snow. I had no idea. But now, we've been keeping the balloons, like, super crazy at bay, which is why I felt safe enough to go for a farm. But now, for the first Moab, I think the best plan of attack will just be to take it out with this guy, like we normally do, and then kind of go from there. But what I would like to do is get an XXL trap as quickly as we can, which I don't know if it'll be 100% obtainable, but it might be. I thought I was gonna have to save up sooner, and no, we still have two rounds here. So I'll just add another camo here, just so we don't have to worry about it on 42, because we're still keeping everything so outside of the track that it doesn't even matter what's going on. And I'm gonna sell him for another farm, of course. XXL traps like 60 grand though, so that could be a little chunky. A little nervous about it, but again, let's just keep farming like crazy. Okay, so here's that ability. See, that's why I needed to keep him up, because I don't know which one it is. All right, go for it. Boom, that was so cool, so cool. Okay, now get rid of you, buy this one all the way up. And then buy one more because our team is going to hold off for a little bit. They're doing really well. We're good on camo. We're good on lead. We're good on bloom popping. The Caltrops is helping out tremendously. Now, before I get too crazy, let's actually get this guy going here. We'll buy him all the way up here. Is that as far as his range is going to go? Then we're going to put him back here then. Now, he's $51,000. That is a lot of money in two rounds. And we don't have enough to even take down the Moabs right now. So what should we do here? I think we'll have to do this, honestly. Oh man, I didn't I didn't plan this one that far ahead. I knew the first one would be easy to take out, but I don't know about the rest. And we'll grab a village here. I guess just a balloon jitsu for now, just to keep it rolling. Okay, Sada helped out there. I think I'm gonna try to go with an alchemist here and then just hope that he can help out strengthen this guy. Oh man, one more farm, one more farm. Because now we have $20,000 in farm, so we need $31,000 to get the XXL trap, but then the game is over once we get that. So in the meantime, what can we use to help out here? Let's just get something that'll like help take damage on these guys. This is the round I was worried about just kind of going faster, but we should be okay. I thought it was gonna be a problem, but I'm gonna take out this BFB first. And I'm going to sell everything, actually. Watch this. I think we should have enough. Not quite, so we'll sell him too. And now we have an XXL trap. Now we should honestly have zero issues. This should be insane. Now there will be some feedback, and we might have a little bit of problems. So I'm going to farm just a little bit more, because eventually he's going to like recap recapture this thing. Like that. Like, just like that. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. I think that was my fault, because I moved it. So let's just not be stupid here. Let's put something to save us in case that happens again. And then should I like pick it up on my own and do this just in case like when we know it's gonna be a lot of balloons? That's just a little scary now that I think about it. So far I've been pretty successful on like reclaiming this thing. So when it's only balloons, like we obviously have enough power to take all the balloons out. And so I clean it up every now and then, but then it's, it's like as soon as a Moab comes out, it destroys it anyway. So I'm thinking the tack zone will help with that. We've only had in this entire run so far, like two rounds that actually got past us. And that was at the end of Apocalypse, which doesn't matter how far it makes it in Apocalypse. And then like right there, we had a little hiccup. Other than that, we're, we're doing pretty well. And then I just grabbed the Crossbow Master. Oh, dude, this is, this is unbelievably crazy. And then if I put this guy here, I think this might work to our favor. We don't even need these anymore. This is stupid. And if we buy this, now what'll happen is if this guy has to like reset his stuff on BFBs or Moabs, they'll slow down. It doesn't really matter. And they'll still get picked up by his trap. This is insane. Now his money didn't make as much as I thought it would. We've only made $30,000. So we haven't even made enough to pay him back. But considering if you count for that, his top upgrade is 50 grand and we've made 32 grand. So we've only spent like 20 grand on that upgrade if you look at it that way. But that was easily the fastest and it just literally sucked up the ZOMG. That was nuts. 
So now we're on half cash, I think. Yes. Okay. So this one's going to take a little bit of little bit of ingenuity and to me not mess it up. So I'm going to put this one here and I'm going to put this one here. And I think that'll get us through most of this. I know we won't lose, which is good. And then until we get Sada, we'll place this one here. Don't let them get you. Okay, good. That's not bad. It's taking a little longer than I want, but I, I we might not even have to sell to get these guys. I'll sell this one though, because I don't think we need it. So that would put us at 425. Yeah, 425 bucks and then we can sell for Sada, but watch me like mess it up and then that was gonna like eat me alive. Okay, there we go, there we go. Sada, Sada, Sada. There we go, Sada. Okay, now we're good. I still think that half cash ends up being the same as Apocalypse for the amount of time it takes you to get towers. I could be wrong, but it just feels the same. But either way, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go with like a 202 tack, go into the Druid, because the Druid's gonna take a while to get there, and then pretty much just save up for the tack afterwards, which means that our camo's gonna kinda lack a little bit, but it's gonna have to, because I need the tack to be a full bottom path tack, so it can take down the Moab. Totally forgot about lead. Oh my goodness, Sada just saved the day. Oh my gosh, that's gonna happen again. But no, 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 we have the Druid now, we're good, we're good. I'm so used to having money. So no, Apocalypse is not the same as half cash. That is for sure. You get definitely less cash in this one. So I might have to rely on Sada for all the camo rounds, even 37, which is just way too, this takes so long to me. But how are we gonna get $3,400 in only six rounds on half cash? I don't think it's possible, but it needs to be possible to be honest. And then I'm worried about camo on 42. So why is this struggle bus? I don't know, but we're not gonna lose. I'm not hitting home. We'll be okay, hopefully, <laughs> anyways. I'm getting a little nervous. I don't think we're gonna make it. We're on 39 and we need 34.55. I mean, maybe. I'm just gonna keep clicking it and then hope that it works because if not, I have to restart. Okay, we got it, we got it. Thank God, oh my goodness. Now you gotta take this thing out, dude. Okay, there we go. Dude, okay, yes, that was good. That was perfect. Now we see some camo here. So I'm actually gonna get a wizard up front just because they're really good. So we'll go camo wizard first. No, 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 that took too long. Oh my gosh, okay. So now we're good on camo, camo's fine. And I'm gonna go for Dragon's Breath because I think that'll help take out a lot of things. Now what I am concerned about is what we're gonna do about 63. It is gonna be a little slower than I want it to. So I think our best plan of action would be to get like a village for some camo and then a bomb. And we'll just take this out the slow way, I guess. Oh, we need something cleaner, what could we use? I don't think this is gonna reach and I'm kind of bummed about it. Oh, it does. Oh my gosh. Every time I think it won't, it does. That's really awesome. So now all these guys can see camo. So our camo's fine. I just got to worry about getting these attacks a little bit better because we only have 11 rounds or so until we get to 63. Here comes our first BFB. I think we can take it out. Oh, that wasn't bad at all. We're doing really good. I am going to slow everything. Oh, I did it again. And that we needed that for 63. Gosh, that's that's actually driving me crazy. I'm going to go for this one too because I think the Moab glue, the Moab glue will help a lot in terms of just slowing them down so we could do a lot of the damage with attack. I would like to get all the way up to attack zone. I don't see that happening, but if we can, that would be great because that would just speed this up tremendously. Oh my gosh, it's actually going through. I'm gonna use her ability then here and this rush, there we go. And then on the second one or the last one, I'll use the ability too. So how about now? Oh, time that terrible. Still works though, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, I just don't see the attack zone happening. That's a lot of money. Like I would love for it to happen, but I think what I'm gonna do here is just put another tack right there. And I honestly, I didn't get the bottom path guy. I was like $3,600 sounds like a lot. So if we go with this one, two of these should be pretty solid. So far so good. I thought I'd be able to get a second or I thought I'd be able to get a plasma accelerator, but that just didn't work out. So I'm just gonna go with another recursive here cause that'll help clean up everything. And this guy's still getting damaged. He's just not getting that plasma that I wanted. And so far so good. Now my mind is kind of stuck on the other one we gotta do, alternate balloon rounds, which are just awful. But here we'll just hit that ability. There we go, now we're on 80. We can take it down with the ability once we get it down to what, BFBs maybe? Yeah, there we go, game. That was super clean. Okay, happy with that, let's go for it. Oh my gosh, we're actually going so fast right now. I can't even believe this, this is insane. Okay, she's gonna carry all of us through those camos and then not the leads. So I think what we'll do for that is just go with a, well, honestly, let's just grab a druid. We're gonna get it anyway. So we'll put our druid buddy right here and put him on hard thorns. Now, the only issue I see right now to keep me from farming like crazy and saving a lot of time, I think would be our camo lead situation. So I'm gonna actually do some cool stuff here. At least I think it's cool. Cause this guy's general popping power isn't bad to begin with. He's super clean. And then with his sea foam he puts out there, he'll be great. And then we can oversize nails and pin it. 
I think that's great. Mixed with this guy. Now, I should be able to farm and not have to worry about anything until like 36 maybe. Now, the problem we're going to have is that a fortified Moab right off the go is pretty awful. That's asking a lot of us. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize what was happening. Okay, let's not do that. Let's No more of that. No more of that. We'll get you some camo just in case. Okay. So now I think what we're gonna do is rely on the armor piercing darts. I know it's not normally like the best idea, but I know it for sure will take it down. And then once we can get like a stronger tower, then we'll kind of worry about it a little more. But we're still keeping everything outside of the screen. So, I mean, I can't complain here, it's pretty good. Now, can we take that down? Yes, we can, that was not bad at all, okay. And now with this juice there, we can take down the regular mob super easy. So I am gonna grab a couple farms here while I have this little lull in time. This one I'm greeting like way too hard. But I know we're going to have fortified Moabs, BFBs, ZOMGs, the whole nine yards. And I'm not sure we can handle it at this point. So I'm just going to keep it simple. Now at round 50, we have four farms. We're going to have enough to get a sub commander, whatever we really want, to be honest. It's going to be kind of crazy. But I do need to think of something here to use because we are slowing down a little bit. Attack's obviously great, but I really liked this guy a little earlier. He was good, like way too good. And just like that on round 59, we have enough for the big dog. And I think this will be fine once I can break it open. Okay, just go, what are you doing? He didn't, he didn't have enough faith. <laughs> he wasn't able to get enough graveyards in time for that. I'm gonna move it just to back a little bit here. So I'm gonna try what we did earlier again. And I'm gonna grab this guy like this. Cause I had five farms. I got a little bit greedy there. But I think this is as fast as you could possibly go. I don't see what could be any faster. You can tell because this guy's barely shooting anything. He's at 227 pops and it's not going up. Yeah, he's not even getting the hits once they go out there. Oh my goodness. So he's shooting and he's not getting any pops. That is insane. These guys are collecting all of them. Oh, that is so cool. So let's just toss these and keep that money. And then what else can we buy? I mean, it doesn't really matter at this point. Just buy a crossbow master. Just break it even more. And just in case, let's just put this guy here too. I don't even know what to buy. Maybe this guy, because then we can use it on 80 on that second ZOMG, but I don't even know when it'll come out in time. So this is kind of crazy. And then might as well just get one of these for now. Okay, so I have my finger on the first strike for number three. And, and then as soon as that second one comes out, no, don't even need to because the, <laughs> the XXL trap is busted. That was so cool. And now we're on Impoppable at one hour and 43 minutes. This is unbelievable. Straight up unbelievable. And we can go like this and put this one here and then we're back right where we started. And we are gonna zoom through this one. And here's our beginning strat. And I think this will allow me to farm. I don't see why not. The only thing I'd have to worry about is maybe more balloons or more camo, but I think Sada can carry us, well, into 32 for sure. So we can at least get one farm here. Cause unfortunately you have to farm an impoppable. If we didn't farm at all, I would love to test it. Maybe not during a run, but I'd love to test like a clean strategy on impoppable with no money. But the problem is, is that everything costs more. So you're just, you're playing chimps, but worse. So it would be kind of ridiculous. Now you could do a little bit different kind of farming. Like you could use like a bottom path boat or something. That'd be a little bit cleaner, I guess. Keep you from getting too crazy. I know I could beat the Moab for cheaper with something like a Mauler, but I don't think it would hurt to get the overdrive now. Just cause again, we already have two farms going here. And then we could grab like a village to kind of give everybody camo. And then we have camo lead, everything covered. Um, we're not gonna pop the Moab that fast. Like regardless, this is kind of ugly if you think about it. Let's see if it works. Okay, no, it didn't work, but I, that's what I planned on. That It's fine. And then once we get this one up to 2400, okay, now we're completely covered. Like nothing's gonna get past us too far and we have nine rounds to farm a little bit more crazy and we should still be able to keep up this great speed. Only thing I messed up on though is my normal way of farming. I would ease, oh man, I, that might be a bad idea. My normal way of farming, I would get this one to the discount village and I should have done that, but then this guy can't see camo. So how do I combat that in this little setup I've given myself? It might not be good. But I did like using the sub. That was super clean. It's not the fastest tower, but it's fast enough. And it's a guarantee like you'll be able to take everything out. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. I am not hurting right now. So I think what we'll do here to combat our problem of like double discount village and camos, I'm gonna get this guy because I think we should use him anyway. Because remember, we're trying to go as fast as we can. Let's get Shimmer. Let's grab this one. We'll sell this village here. And this village will be the top path so we can get that jungle drums on everybody. Dude, what the heck? I just had it here. Will that work? Oh, okay, I was gonna say, we're wasting a lot of money on this. And then I guess just make this the camo one because it's gonna be double discount. I mean, I guess, whatever. And we're getting a little bit greedy here right before 63, but I think we can afford it to be honest. And then we'll grab a farm here. Oh, I didn't think of that, did I? Oh, dude, you're so dumb sometimes. Can we fit a farm right there? 
This is not something to be doing at 59 or whatever round we're on. Let's do this for now. This to be safe. And then we'll grab him some camo. There we go. We'll get this one up to 3360 because we're making a lot of money. So I know we'll be okay regardless. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. And then what we'll do is this is a very shoddy play right now, but it'll get the job done. And then we'll put one of these guys somewhere. Somewhere. Where are they going to go? How about right there? Not the best spot. This village is just in my way. I'm going to be real here. So we need to get this one up to here. We don't need to go too crazy on farming, but just enough to be able to get enough for what we need. <laughs> so I'm thinking like maybe one more, but then I'm going to have to like use my cursor a lot. And I really don't want to do that. This isn't that bad. We'll do one more farm. Okay. Now we have two farms and this one sells for nearly 20,000 as well. So we are good at selling for $60,000 when we need it. So our next step is going to be getting the print of darkness for 31,000. And that will carry us pretty far. Like we're on round... 70 with 30 rounds left and i'm done farming so that is very 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 good considering and we sacrificed some of these like round 60s and early 70s for the money but i again i think it's worth it because those ending rounds are so long the faster we can get through them the better so there's our prince easy stuff and this guy's just so good i don't see why we shouldn't use him he was insane and just like that, before round 80, we're going to have the XXL trap. It'll just suck up the ZOMG, and we're pretty much done at this point. Like, this will survive, I think, everything but the bad. So why wouldn't we at this point? Well, first, we should try to get this discount a little bit better. Well, it just looks like we're not going to get a discount. Not a big deal. We'll just put this guy here, get rid of that one. And we're just going to grab a Flying Fortress because it'll be quick. It'll be awesome. It'll do everything we need it to do. And it's relatively not that expensive, $102,000. But considering we make bank, I don't see the problem. Dude, having money is the way to go. I know I always say, but this is ridiculous. And look at this. We've only gotten 10,000 pops since we got him on round 80. That's how good our XXL trap and the other guy are doing. This is just insanity to me. So we've already beaten it. Like, we've already beaten it to a pulp. There's nothing else that can really be done any faster. I mean, look, we can just grab stuff at this point just because we can. I don't think I can reach this guy with a village, though. No, you can't. So that's a waste. You know what we can do, though, to make it even faster? Grab a Ray of Doom. <laughs> this is goofy. Oh, my goodness. This is what I like to see, though. We are in, we are going insanely fast. We're going to finish this before two hours, and that means we have a good 23, 24 minutes to beat chimps and still have a, like a record time. And I want you guys to look it up and let me know if frozen over. I don't know where to check for like actual leaderboards. We might be at like a top, top time here with this. This is insane to me. Please don't give me totems. Okay, good, good, good. This is perfect. And this is the last round. We are done. We are done. We're going to put our girl Sada down and call it a day. Okay, don't lose to the Sada. That could be actually really bad. What should we get? Like a sniper just in case? No, I know what to get. One dart monkey right here. Just in case. Actually, why though? Why though? It looks like we're doing fine. We'll put it down if we need to. And I, I say that then we need it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, don't do that. I should have just done it. I should have went against my better instinct there. Okay, that wasted like two seconds. So I'm really not that concerned about it. Now the problem is I do want to go with a... Oh no, that's going to be tough, huh? Now that I think about it. I want to go with attack. But if I put it in the wrong spot, I can't sell it. So I got to make sure I place everybody just right. But we are getting overwhelmed here and or it'll be perfect just to have enough for this one. Perfect. Okay, now we're golden. But we're finally about to hit two hours right about now. And we still have 21 minutes and 43 seconds to beat the other one, which we're going to do with flying colors. This is awesome. So here's where I'm going to put my tack eventually, right about there. We need more camo, yes, but I just want to make sure we have everything ready. And then I need to put my village in here. And the reason we're going to go with the village is because I am going to go with the bottom path wizard as well. But I would like this to be MIB so we can take out those DDTs just in case, like really, really quickly. So we're going to put this here. That'll guarantee that. And then we can work on our wizard. Oh my gosh, the fire's on the wrong side. Oh, I hate when stuff like that happens. I mean, it won't make us lose, but our time is going to be suffering from that if it needs to come down to it. So let's just hope that we get away from him as fast as we can we just need 34 55 for the overdrive and then we'll grab shimmer all right i'm just going to use sada's ability i wasn't sure what to do for actual round 40 but we should be able to take it down with this and then i am going to get camo right away so i don't have to stress about it i probably could have gone with the other one but what are what are you going to do like i could have gone with shimmer and then probably even had enough for the other one by now but it's okay now we have a good village ready to go and i can't get primary training though because i have to get monkey intelligence bureau later on 
And then I think this is the way to go. Get Necromancer, Unpopped Army, put them right here what we've been doing, and his range is in range of everything, so it's just golden. Now I need to figure out how to place an alchemist here, but I keep having problems. And it's funny because I always mention about BTD5 and how we should like take things from it like a uh, mastery mode or fast track mode, whatever it may be. But there's one thing that I do not miss from BTD5. Let me know if you remember below. And it 100% was when if you went through another round, like let's say this is round 50 and then we went to round 51, it would pull my tower away if I haven't placed it yet, which was awful. Like that was the worst thing in the world because you would take you forever to place a tower just perfectly and then it would rip it away if you didn't have it down in time for the next round. Look, he's not even hitting this tack. That was such a waste. I just wasted like three grand. Oh, no, no, no. It's only using Sada. I mean, that's not the worst thing in the world that could happen, but it's not making me happy. That's for sure. And since I love to talk about BTD5 so much, another thing I miss about it is that like when you're placing banana farms down, or any type of tower, you could place them on top of each other. Like the hit boxes were insanely tiny and it was such a cool thing. And basically like right here, you could place a, a banana farm and then place another and place another, place another. You could place probably 50% more than you would be to on BTD6 because the like, what do you call those hit boxes weren't as tiny as they are now. It was awesome. And just having a village down got you a fat discount on all of the stuff around it. So it wasn't, you didn't have to get the bottom path or anything like that. It just having it there chopped it down so much so you can get supers and farms for so cheap just by placing one around it. It was so cool. But there is our Prince of Darkness and I mean, pretty much game over at this point, to be honest. I'll move this back just a little bit, like right there maybe. So if you click this, it makes it go away, huh? Yeah, that's crazy. So while you're placing it, it doesn't know what to do with itself. That's pretty crazy. But our alchemist is completely missing the mark with this guy. And I don't know what else to do because unless I place like another one, I just, I just don't know. But why isn't this guy stopping 63? That's what I was talking about. Okay, good. It is now, but it wasn't. It's just a bummer on chimps that you don't get any money because the XXL trap would be awesome, but no chance. Cause we'd lose about like 20 to $30,000 that we'd get on like an impoppable run, but everything costs so much more anyway. It doesn't really matter. Kind of just makes up for it. But honestly, I think that we're going to have 21,600 for the tax zone in no time. Plus having this guy already, we're golden. And then if we get this guy to MIB, we'll be able to take down DDTs and he'll clean him up. I'll just probably bounce this back a little bit to target it here. I'm bummed that I put my sniper that far back because I would like to have him in range. So then he could stall the camo DDTs as well, but can't have it all. So I think our next tower will be something like, I just want to deal with straight damage. I don't even want to have any problems. So maybe like a mad, could we save up that much? I don't think so, right? And 73, we have attack zone. Oh my goodness. So I can't place an ice down here and that's unfortunate. So my embrittle idea is kind of down the drain. I mean, you can't have it all, right? But I would like to get another tower, obviously. I just don't know what, cause I really don't think we're gonna have enough to afford. Yeah, like I really don't think we can afford a mad. That's just a, so much money. We need about 60 grand, but we still have 20 rounds left and we get like over a hundred grand. So I know we can afford it. I just don't know by what round. So is it gonna be a waste and we're gonna struggle in between and we're gonna waste the money anyway. But honestly, who, yeah, I put it in out of range of the village. What a genius. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's not gonna slow our time now. I'll still put it here. Okay, so we, now we're at $54,000 to get there. That is ridiculous. Might as well put this guy facing towards it too. He's not going to do anything. Oh my gosh, we almost lost. Oh my gosh, 87 was too much for us. This is what I'm talking about. So you just don't expect it. And then I, I was just not paying attention. So I'm going to put this guy back a little farther here and then use Rocket Storm. Oh my goodness. See, can we go for another $34,000 right now? We might lose on 90. So I'm going to move this guy back here. I think that's the smarter play because by the time the DTs come out, I want those BFBs to be already trailing. I don't know why I have them so far back, to be honest. Maybe how about there? That was actually very scary. Imagine losing that far on after being so big headed about it. Cause we're doing so good. We're almost done. We are world record time right now. Exactly my point though. We could have had other towers here to help this out and make it a little faster. But now we're just kind of like wasting time to trying to get this guy up. I have to use Sada again. This is getting too, too much here guys. Too much, too much, too much. Let's not and say we did. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. So as you can guess, I'm pretty bummed out guys. We're still at two hours and 20 minutes. So we could have easily destroyed our best time. And what's kind of crazy is that we're still gonna get a very solid time because we have three minutes after our best time to get second place. So we could still very well pull off a second place with this run as long as I don't mess it up. Now I did that entire black border, this entire thing with no 
major mistakes. And then I decided, you know, let's get a mad. And the reason why is because I was worried about the big bad at the end. And I was like, well, a mad will take care of everything. So we're in the 90s, the late 90s. And I'm like, oh, you know, let's try to save up another 20 grand when I could have just gotten a sub commander and kept it clean. And so that's what we're going to do. I'm not going to mess around with this stuff. So we went with this guy first and then I placed my ice in the very, very beginning. So I knew that we'd have a spot for it because embrittlement plus attack is just broken. And, and there goes our time. I think we're like 10 seconds away, six seconds away from losing our first place time. And that guys, I am so bummed. We had it, we had it in the bag. Like that was insane speed. That was still our fastest run yet. Like without a doubt, if I didn't make that mistake, I wanna put up the time and then I'll do some like smart math there to see what our time would have been based on like the last couple rounds of this one, give or take a couple seconds, of course and see what our time like theoretically could have been. We still have a couple maps left that we can make like a really, really good time on. So we'll probably try this one more time before we're done with all the beginner maps. Or you know what, in the future, I'm gonna have to come back and do one of these maps again. Cause I just, ugh, I'm not there yet guys. I keep making dumb mistakes, but running chimps in your first go is a struggle on its own, unless you're like a pro, pro, pro player. So, I mean, what we've done is, isn't the worst. Like I'm not like completely upset about it. I just don't know if the Prince of Darkness was the best play for those later rounds. I mean, he must have been nerfed or something because he was just letting way too much through and he had full graveyard and everything. So it's just a little weird to me, but maybe like he's letting a lot through now too. But I think what I'll do is I'll move this guy back here because we're not really going to need it to be that crazy. Our graveyard's going to always be up. So let's use him more of like a last resort kind of thing. And we technically don't need the MIB just yet. We might by like 95, but embrittlement will do a really good job of making sure everything just kind of goes away. So I'm going to save up 27,000 for a sub commander. And then I'm going to stupidly buy like an MIB for that. So I'm going to waste a lot of money on that. But we had so much left over to buy two MIBs, sabotage supply line kind of thingy. So we're good. It's just destroying me watching all of our place times go past us. So that's our second place run. Now the best we could do is third place right now. I don't even see 95. This is such a cleaner run. I should have gone with the sub in the beginning. I knew he was good. I said he was good and then I screwed that up. But I think with this one too, everything's just gonna be super easy now. We could just add a couple more subs here if we can fit them. No, we don't get that MIB though. Ah, I'll just leave it. Oh my gosh, what the heck's going on here? We're doing it again. Let's get out of here with that. And then I think for this one, we're gonna go like this and just get out of here with that. And that'll take down the big guy, I think, hopefully. Or well, maybe it was taken down beforehand. I don't know. No, 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 no. Okay, that was it. Done, 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 done. Okay, got game, go, game, game, game. I'm losing my mind now. Don't get, make me do that thingy. Okay, one, two, and then FN9. Two hours and 27 minutes and 22 seconds, which puts us at, if I'm not mistaken, that puts us at seventh place. Seventh. And we were beyond first place with that run. That is just such grossness to me, but I'm gonna grab this one because we have been using Sada, so I think she'll be solid for that. And I want the ceramic and fortified one, but I don't wanna buy this, but we might as well just get that one later. But I am so devastated right now. Let me do some math and see where we would have been. So our first run, we died on round 94 at two hours and 12 minutes and 10 seconds. On our second run, we got to round 94 at two hours and 26 minutes and 10 seconds and finished the entire run at two hours and 27 minutes, 22 seconds. What that means is it only took about a minute from 94 until the finish line, meaning that our time on the first run would have theoretically been two hours and 13 minutes and 22 seconds, putting us at a ridiculous first place, eight minutes above every other map. I'm pretty bummed out, but we still do have a lot of chances left. Like park path will be very easy. Winter park will be very easy and we can make logs and four circles has a very good beginning curve that we can make it really, really, really easy. So our chances are not used up yet. I'm just like, that's such a super bummer. Hit that like button if you haven't yet on this video so other people can find it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have not yet, check out this video where we play what you guys all voted as the worst beginner map hedge. And we fully blackboarded it as fast as we possibly could. And I'm going to say that we destroyed that map. Check it out here.